Hello and welcome this lovely Wednesday morning to Market Insight. I am Lovina Emma. Now on Market Insights, we talk about commodities, we talk about our stocks, we also talk about how these commodities affect the common people in our country and across the world. Now let's get right into perspective. Now Nigeria is a country that is blessed with so many natural resources. We have land, we have water, we have sunlight. And how do we put these natural resources into renewable energy to benefit the communities across this country? In recent times, the country has been affected by unstable power supply, just to mention a few. And we know that in this renewable energy sector, we can get affordable jobs, we can get more communities to be electrified and to see more things across the whole wide world. But on today's show, we're going to look into how we can use renewable energy as a source of livelihood, as a source of electricity for the people in this country. And also how renewable energy has impacted on the lives of other people across the world and how Nigeria can learn from the examples of countries across the world. These and so much more are what I'll be discussing with our guests. So please join us after the break. Dr. Rafiu Oladipo. My name is Baba Jalar Repega. I'm Reverend Julia Benite. I'm Godio Didi. My name is uh, Professor Oladipo Suleiman Olarawajo. Sook News is on the ground, loading. Very enlightening, very educative, and entertaining. Thank you to Sook News. So I'm happy that Sook TV has come into existence. I'm happy to be here in Isok News. I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel and keep watching news that makes sense. As Browning said, one's extension of one's reach should not exceed one's grasp or what is heaven for. And I think Isok News is doing that. Africa needs a voice of truth and Isok News has become one of them. And get ready, get ready, get ready. And keep watching. Keep watching Zook News. Keep watching Zook News. It's a place to be. Keep watching Zook News. Latif Jackonde. Born Latif Kayode Jackonde in the Ekbetedu area of Lagos Island, Lagos State, on July 1929. He studied at the Lagos Public School at Enwawa, Lagos Island then at Bonham Memorial Methodist School, Port Harcourt, King's College, enrolled at Elisha Grammar School, where he edited a literary paper called The Quarterly Mirror. Jack Onde began a career in journalism in 1949 with the Daily Service and joined the Nigerian Tribune in 1953. The owner, Chief Obafemi Awolowo, appointed Jack Onde editor-in-chief of the Tribune in 1956. Jack Onde established John West Publications in 1975 after leaving Tribune and began to publish the Lagos News. He served as the first president of the Newspaper Proprietors Association of Nigeria, NPAN. Jack Onde ran for election as executive governor of Lagos State in 1979 on the Unity Party of Nigeria platform his administration was effective and open and implemented the cardinal policies of his party. He introduced housing and educational programs targeting the poor, building new neighborhood primary and secondary schools, and providing free primary and secondary education. He gave poor people's children education, and many of them are now very prominent in the society today. Jack Onde established the Lagos State University and constructed over 30,000 housing units. After the military takeover in 1983, Jack Onde was charged, prosecuted, and convicted of treason and later pardoned. He served as Minister of Works under the Sani Abacha military regime. 
He died in Lagos on February 11, 2021. Latif Jaconde was the first civilian governor of Lagos State. Latif Kayode Jaconde. Souk Enlightenment. My name is Ron Gangechi Eze. Charles Abana. My name is Professor Martins MJ. Professor Sylvester Odion Akaine. Keep watching Zook News TV. The best news channel online. Salivating, it's a lightning, it's educating. Mohammed Ali found this route in Africa, rumble in the jungle. I swear the king is humble. Jesse Jackson, OJ Simpson, this is black history. Andre Young visit Africa in the late sisters. Legend, Bob Marley make the large different. Martin Luther King and Malcolm X are big names. They fought for black Americas in the old days. We need the same revolution in our own ways. Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson, Mr. Jay-Z, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre and Eddie Murphy. American prosperity ain't complete with African poverty. It's legendary Idris Abdul Karim, and you are on to Soap News. You don't touch that down. Broad Street. Broad Street, situated in Lagos Island, is steeped in Nigerian history. Once the biggest financial hub of the country, it housed the headquarters of major banks linked to CBN the stock exchange, and the lows of lender companies. Broad Street is a historically significant street. It has played a central role in the development of Lagos and history. An important commercial and administrative centre for the British colonial authorities, it was also a home to some of the city's earliest modern buildings. Broad Street was a residential area in the pre-colonial era. With the British came the Methodist Boys High School in 1878 and the Broad Street Prison in 1882, renamed Freedom Park. The General Hospital, which was a British military hospital, was built in 1893, being the first general hospital in Nigeria. The old British Secretariat Building, which is now the Federal Ministry of Justice, was built in 1906. Broad Street has seen a full turn into modern commercial office blocks, complexes, skyscrapers, and markets from the outer marina through a pombo early into the Adeniji Adele Road. Broad Street is one of the busiest streets in Nigeria on weekdays, where commercial activities take place day and night. From modern buildings to Asian structures, this street gives one a raw dose of life in Lagos. Broad Street is often referred to as Lagos Financial District. It boasts a mix of architectural styles, reflecting its long history, colonial era buildings, Victorian and Edwardian architectural features, alongside more modern skyscrapers and structures. Broad Street remains a vital, vibrant part of the Nigerian economy. Broad Street. Souk Enlightenment. Welcome back. On today's show, I said we're going to talk about renewable energy. How do we make it affordable to communities all over Nigeria? And what lessons can Nigerians learn from other countries tapping into the sources of renewable energy? So joining me to discuss these and so much more is Mr. Sam, our in-house guest right here at Souk News. Welcome to the show, Mr. Sam. My pleasure. Thank you for joining us this morning. So renewable energy, we know that all over the world, countries are using it, tapping, using their natural sources as sources of electricity in communities. But here in Nigeria, like what is it all about to use renewable energy as a source of electricity? All right, uh, uh, there's a growing concern uh, moving away from uh, hydrocarbon uh, fossil fuel to renewable energy. Uh, the government already have a plan in place uh, the policy frameworks are there. So what should we be discussing? To what extent can we uh, scale up uh, this regulatory framework that currently exists uh, to uh, take advantage of those um, renewable energy uh, uh, that is uh, in bands and in leap in uh, Nigeria. So particularly sunshine that is more 
uh, advantageous in this part of the world. They will have uh, rural electrification schemes that can take advantage of this uh, renewable energy so that we can um, catch up with the rest of the world. Okay, yes, I totally agree with you on that. Now, to t explain further, we know that in Nigeria, I want to take you up on your points on the rural electrif electrification of communities. We know that in some areas, like to be um, in Nasarawa State, for example, they recently the federal government, in partnership with another private company, came up with how to create a mini grid to electrify a community, total community in Nasarawa State. And also in Bayelsa State, Oloribiri community, they also have a hybrid, a hybrid mini grid, to also electrify the community. But these are just very few in very small areas in Nigeria. How do we ensure that this goes across the communities all over Nigeria? Because we know in the urban areas, it's easier to leave the use of um, our regular electric system and get solar panels for your homes or for your offices. But how do we ensure that it's more accessible in rural communities? I think the government has uh, a framework uh, uh, for this hybrid uh, uh, technology to use uh, alternative uh, source of power. And uh, those framework that exist in various communities, there's a mandate by the Federal Rural Electrification uh, 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 Agency uh, to try and power many rural communities uh, that cannot be supported by the uh, uh, national grid. So these mini grids or hybrid options uh, that are provided within the communities, uh, to what extent can we upscale them uh, so that bigger, uh, larger uh, people within the bigger communities can take advantage? But I do know for sure, like in Bayesa State and uh, the Lorubiri you mentioned, some of the oil uh, producing companies uh, are equally providing hybrid electricity through renewable energy. Uh, Total Energy, for example, is equally pioneering uh, sonar uh, energy so that people can upscale those ones in commercial uh, quantity so that they can benefit some rural community within Nigeria. But the government, whether state, federal, and even uh, local government, should find a way to tap into this opportunity. Uh, the alternatives, which are renewable energy, the transitioning period uh, is sufficient enough where we can make massive investment in that sector. Okay. Massive investment. Yes. I like the phrases that you use, Mr. Sam. This is actually very, um, you're actually enabling us to understand how this process will be able to spread all over the country. So. We know that, yes, in Nigeria, we have the federal government which powers um, in charge of, they have an ele electric body that powers electricity all over the country. And we also know some private individuals, private companies are also generating electricity in their way. But mostly, it's even though the federal government has given a directive for states to also to be able to power electricity, but it's still in charge of the federal government. So now, how do we also um, use other sources of energy? Right now, we always use water and gas, let me just say hydro and gas. So how do we tap into wind energy? Because I know that all over this country, wind is something that we feel, and we're not, we haven't, I feel that we haven't really tapped into that energy sector that much. We don't have enough windmills in terms of using it for the purpose of electricity. Uh, you have those uh, alternative uh, source of energy already in place. Uh, what is important and what is uh, critical uh, going forward uh, was the unbundling of uh, the exclusive uh, um, reserve of the federal government uh, to play in that sector. Uh, there was um, uh, an amendment uh, to that act that now gave um, state, even local government, to be able to generate um, even hydro and other form of energy. Uh, so it has left the exclusive list to the concurrent uh, list. So state government and local government must look within the peculiarity of any source of alternative energy within their community and to what extent can they tap into wind, depending on the area. If you're talking about sunshine, maybe there's plenty of it yes. in the rainforest area like of Ondo State. So more solar power uh, generation. Yeah. Then if you talk about wind, maybe you're talking about the upper north that can take advantage. If you're talking about um, 
power driven by ocean oscillation. That's the wavelength you can generate electricity. But then the challenge here is that we don't have adequate investment in that sector. So the government needs to encourage um, private public Partnership, partnership yes. that can drive that process. And the only way to achieve that is that government should provide some form of uh, tax incentive, uh, tax holidays for private sector. Uh, and I do know there are companies coming from Germany in partnership with the federal government to find a way to see how they can scale up uh, this renewable energy in some uh, part of the country. Yes, and we also have some partnerships with um, a co private company at the Netherlands, actually, to actually improve on our electric system. Yes, so I'm also aware of that. Yes, this partnership, like you mentioned, are very important. But how do we ensure that these are actually quite affordable? Currently, in Nigeria, electricity tariffs are something that has gone on the increase. Like, how do we ensure that it's quite affordable? The purpose of using renewable energy, we know sources are from natural sources, and I believe that being coming from natural sources, it should be more affordable to people. Right now, our electricity tariffs are on the very high side, and we know that it's not everybody that can afford these things. But how can we tap into this and make it more affordable? For example, we know that the solar panels that are being used in the urban areas are quite expensive. But using, if we decide to transfer these in partnership with um, renewable energy sources, and we work together with this, how do we now make it more affordable if we're going to use sunlight as a source of electricity? Well, the current tariff paid for electricity is a function of uh, the rate of inflation uh, in the country because um, for those who are providing electricity, they go to the market uh, to borrow money to improve on their operation. So okay. if you are borrowing at a high level of, uh, so the would... cost of fund is expensive. To that, no, I'm not trying to justify uh, why uh, tariffs is uh, uh, expensive. Side, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the business operating environment okay. uh, that is very hostile. So you, you, you cannot go to bank to borrow a two-digit uh, 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 money and at the end of the day that cannot sustain your operation. So naturally uh, the cost of those uh, funds will be transferred to the consumer. That's needed to just uh, to put just that in perspective. Okay. On the other hand Renewable energy are cheaper source of energy, and that uh, if those private public partnership, if they are sustainable over time, and they are able to um, design certain renewable energy that are peculiar to certain communities, then based on the source of raw material for renewable energy, then the pricing in terms of the electricity they provide for those communities will come down uh, drastically. So. If you're using uh, waste to gas energy, uh, using uh, compost, yeah, com uh, composite, composite, yes, uh, within an environment, yes. uh, waste generated from those environment, maybe um, dump sites, yes, and uh, you look at the community that is contiguous to those uh, dump sites, you're able to uh, provide clean energy. Then the pricing uh, will drastically uh, go down. Then you talk about solar driven; uh, those things are expensive for now, but over time, once we have uh, what you call economic of scale, then those who are investing in those sectors will be able to recoup their investment. So tariff will naturally uh, come down. But where we are currently, uh, the issue of tariff uh, uh, is a major challenge for consumer, and we continue to be to be able to provide reasonable uh, alternative source of energy. Well, Mr. Sam has offered very good solutions as proffered there, but it's still, it doesn't sound so hopeful. It sounds more like it's a bit bleak for people who are looking forward to like to hearing, oh, we're going to have cheaper... Uh, no, there is hope, cheap, but, uh, but you must consider investment in that sector. There are people yes. that are paid their, their salaries and wages, then uh, the business must um, stay afloat. So yes, even if they are not making true. profit, at least they should break even. So, but the government needs a massive encouragement. We have uh, the alternative source of energy deposited in our, in, in our country. But then we need to do an investment so that we can convert those natural resources into energy. And we can take advantage of various communities that are endowed with various uh, renewable energy sources. 
Yes, yes. Yeah, well, we're, we're hopeful. We will definitely be hopeful. Life actually, is right? dependent on hope. Let's yes, be hopeful. Yes, it, it, <laughs> it is. It is, actually. But um, to actually go further on this, how do we get, you know, recently, I'm sure everybody has been talking about it, the current electricity situation. It's been fluctuating. It hasn't been very constant. But how can you provide a, can you recommend, rather, a solution? Can we have a mix in our combination of energy sources with perhaps fossil fuels and renewable energy to actually give a more permanent solution, if you could recommend one. Yes, uh, the concept of energy transition uh, is an ongoing discussion. What I think the challenge that we have even as a country is that um, we're even richer in uh, gas deposits, but to what extent has the government made some investment in trying to see how we can use gas to power some of these uh, uh, power stations. So if we're able to utilize the uh, gas that is being fled in the Niger data yeah. positively, then that, to a very large extent, uh, will reduce uh, the power outage that we currently uh, experience in the country. So the challenge is uh, for leadership. The challenge is for more investment in private sector uh, to take advantage of that industry. To what extent can we convert even gas, which is even a cleaner source of energy, even while we transition to renewable energy. Because the transitioning has a period of about 20 years. That, that's uh, a long time. Yeah, to achieve. But then we must uh, take a holistic approach. While we currently have a challenge, gas is still a better option for us as a country and as a people. But then we are blessed with so much uh, sunshine, so let's take advantage of those other ones. Now that the industry is uh, deregulated to some extent, I'm sure when states are able to provide electricity, some companies are able to provide electricity, then the price and the tariff will eventually uh, come down. Okay, I, I understand, yes, the need for investments, the need for public-private partnership, and the need for more foreign investors also invest in it. But I wanted to also know, how do we use fossil fuels to actually combine together with this renewable energy, actually? No, we're trying to phase out. We want to just phase no, out. No, that is the global understanding okay. because of its impact on climate change. So for us to move away from the impact of climate change, then fossil fuel, which is a major source of energy, which is a hydrocarbon product, are being phased out gradually. But then, in terms of the level of development, it will even take us a longer period based on those projections that have been made. But then, before we get into proper utilization of renewable energy as a country, then you must still provide some form of electricity. And I'm saying the gas option is the best option, uh, pending when we're able to transit into this. So even globally, the investment to transit uh, is in trillions of uh, US uh, dollars. So it's not uh, a tea party business. We need massive investment, particularly in the global south, where we have uh, electricity to consumer ratio gap is so, so low. Yes, it is. Yes, but um, yes, we know with gas, for example, there have been issues of gas flaring every now and then, especially in the south-south region. And we sometimes we've witnessed this gas flaring last for days and days. Nothing can turn off these flames. But we want to actually have a safer option. If you could actually without, okay, yes, gas is one. We've been relying on our dams for electricity supply. Yes, that's another one. That also has its own um, side effects to it. But something less uh, that will be more productive, something that can actually create, um, if I may also add, I can also make it affordable to people and can also create some job opportunities for that community where it is being provided. Yeah, the, when you talk if about... If we're not going to use gas, if we're not going to use water, or let me just say hydro. No, once you're able to convert uh, the gas uh, into uh, electricity, the flaring that you see uh, will cease to be. There's a government framework uh, to stop flaring, but uh, that vision that was articulated <laughs> as Vision 2020 oh, has not come to fruition. That's no, on the one hand. 
number two, why we need investment in the renewable energy sector. The greatest polluters of this world, which is a global not, uh -huh. they are still using coal as an option to provide electricity. And but they are telling us to move away quickly. But they are the greatest polluters. So the point I'm making is that, yes, the world is moving into renewable energy uh -huh. or alternative source of energy, uh, as the case may be. But the greatest polluter, the industrial worlds, China see use coal to power electricity. Russia see use coal. Big deposit of coal around the Nugu, Unsuka area that is yet on top. So why don't we use those source of energy to power uh, electricity so that more people uh, can take advantage of whether it's the national grid, whether it's mini grid, whatever name that is called. So energy transitioning is a major challenge, but the global north cannot push us in a direction where they are still guilty of uh, some of those things uh, they are telling us to change. So climate change is yet to stay, but then the transitioning has to be gradual. And the global side that does not have massive investment must still find a way to take advantage of hydrocarbon, coal, and other sorts of um, energy to provide uh, electricity for her people. Okay, please hold that thought, Mr. Sam. When we return after the break, we'll discuss further with Mr. Sam. Please stay tuned. My name is Dr. Rafiu Oladipo. My name is Baba Jalal Repega. I'm Reverend Julia Benite. I'm Godio Didi. My name is uh, Professor Oladok Ponsulaiman Olarawajo. Sook News is on the ground, loading. Very enlightening, very educative, and entertaining. Thank you to Sook News. So I'm happy that Souk TV has come into existence. I'm happy to be here in Souk News. I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel and keep watching news that makes sense. As Browning said, one's extension of one's reach should not exceed one's grasp, or what is heaven for? And I think Souk News is doing that. Africa needs a voice of truth, and Souk News has become one of them. And get ready, get ready, get ready. And keep watching. Keep watching Zook News. Keep watching Zook News. It's a place to be. Keep watching Zook News. Welcome back. So I'm still here with my guest, Mr. Sam. We're discussing how we can have more affordable renewable energy sources that can actually power our electricity and actually serve as a permanent solution in Nigeria with our fluctuating electricity supply. So Mr. Sam has proffered that we need more investments to make renewable energy more effective and we also need more public-private partnership. And we also need to look at look at using our natural resources like our sunlight, like our lands, like our water, like we also have composite. We can also serve as very good electricity supply to us in Nigeria. But we also know that there are countries in the West that, have, that are also using this renewable energy in much uh, better ways to avoid such negative side effects. So we want to actually discuss that further with Mr. Sam. How can Nigeria benefit or how can Nigeria learn from these countries in the West, like in the US and the UK, countries in Europe, they're actually using uh, more affordable renewable energy sources with very few side effects in their different communities. Mr. Sam. Uh, I, I don't buy into that uh, uh, discussion, uh, particularly from the global north. I know side by side, uh, they're using hydrocarbon to power electricity. Uh, there's a transition into renewable energy. So but they then they should give us energy space uh, That's what you're to saying. equally move. Yes, a mix 
okay. uh, 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 of that energy solution. So it has to be a gradual process. Uh, they should not uh, push us so hard as if we are committed crime. They are still generating uh, electricity from uh, coal, like I mentioned earlier. So mm -hmm. I'm not saying that renewable energy is not good, but then we need a massive investment, and we are not there yet. So we'll cash up with them at a certain level. But then the government must be serious, provide the right ecosystem so that the investment that we talked about earlier can come in. Then they should find a way of doing some baseline studies, looking at what is best for various community, depending on the factor endowment in terms of those uh, resource, so that yes. um, when people invest in those sectors, they can quickly recoup their investments. So renewable energy is the way to go. But then we don't want the West to wake us into believing that um, uh, if we are not there yet, there's a problem. Because they are making investment. Even in China, you see, power the electricity from coal. So what, what, what's, what is so special about Africa? So we want investment to be made in those areas too. I want you should exploit those uh, 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 deposits in Enugu, in Usuka yes, area, in, in so that they can provide electricity. Why uh, we focus either using composite for certain community, using sunlight, and other forms of uh, alternative energy that would be applicable uh, based on peculiarity of communities and the environment, so that those who invest in those things can quickly get their investment back. Then yes. the consumers, uh, at the end of the day, will be happy for it. Yes, okay. Uh, okay, I, I do, um, yes, you have actually explained that very well. But to expand it further, now what part of the industrial production can actually serve to achieve this renewable energy? Because we know our industries, yes, they actually do produce a lot of things. We know that we have, the, we have so many industries all over the country. We know that um, they are, whatever they said, in terms of waste materials, how can this be used, how can this be transferred to renewable energy sources? That's what I want to know. Uh, I think uh, if I g get you correctly, you're saying that um, some of the manufacturing companies, yes. uh, beyond the traditional hydrocarbon source of uh, energy, yes, uh, some of them uh, should be encouraged, uh, not compelled, uh, to use renewable energy as a source of energy f to power their industry. And uh, going forward, uh, I think the solution too is that those industries within certain community, once they meet their own energy requirement, they should equally um, uh, commercialize yes, some of the surplus energy uh, beyond those their industrial complexes to the immediate communities. Uh, it could be in form of uh, uh, corporate social responsibility, but then the tariffs uh, that they charge the people within their host community uh, should be cheaper than the official rate that is being charged. So they can use it as a CSR and at the same time powering those communities. Uh, then they can make some claim uh, from government in terms of a uh, tax exemption that we are powering S community as a CSR. Then what we are going to pay our corporate tax, let's get some incentive so that we're able to provide. So if, if government encourage industry to do that, then the transition uh, to renewable energy will be faster and we're able to meet uh, the targets. Okay, so I'm, um, yes, I understand what you have just said there, but I'm referring to, for example, a, an industry that is into wood making, furniture making, now the raw materials, the, um, the wood dust, the sawdust. dust, can, we, can those also be used as a source of energy? Because we know there are industries that have the end product, the waste products that they don't use when they have finished whatever it is they're making. It could be in terms of wood, it could be in terms of metals or iron. So how can that actually be transferred into sources of renewable energy? There are some parts of the world that actually I, I, I use think that's the point dust. I just spoke to okay. earlier. The point okay, I'm making is that- You said it should be used as CSR. That's yeah, what? I'm saying, you just mentioned wood. As an example. Yes, as an alternative. So if a company is into wood processing and uh, some of the waste 
that are generated can be a form of renewable energy. I'm saying they should develop those kind of renewable energy, uh, yeah. even to power their own industry, yeah. first and foremost. Then whatever is a surplus, they can transfer those surplus as a form of renewable energy to their immediate community. And those communities, rather than paying a commercial rate in terms of tariff, they can use those as a form of CSR to the immediate community. I'm not saying that um, they should just give those alternatives to the immediate community. So good that whatever uh, uh, waste product that can be converted to renewable energy within industry should be exploited. But then as you exploit those ones for commercial purposes, then you can equally find a way to giving out some of the uh, surpluses to the immediate community. And I said they can use that as a form of CSR, which will give some uh, tax, a tax incentive for them when they want to make claim uh, from government sometime. Okay, okay, thank you very much for expatiating further on that subject, Akeli. Yes, we know we have to incorporate this energy into our country, into our livelihoods, into our communities. We know that in terms of electricity supply within Nigeria, it's mo most of the time it's the urban centers that actually have more benefits of this. The rural areas are not really benefiting that much. If we go deep into whether you're in the north, south, east or west, most rural communities had, are not really blessed with proper electrification. So that being said, um, how do we, in, in, we, yes, how do we actually get more of these natural resources? Like, how do we educate people? Because there was a documentary, I just want to use this as an example, that I watched in which a community in South Asia was actually using water placed in a clear plastic bottle and they'll just keep that in the ceiling. And once it gets dark, this water in a clear plastic bottle serves as light in a room. So they had this, um, this objective of putting these bottles of clear water in different rooms so that at night time they could have clear lights without using things like candles and lanterns that could maybe, if you fall asleep, could cause a fire. So how do we educate our citizens actually on the benefits of using but making it more beneficial. Okay, if you are looking at it from a micro level, uh, that uh, people should look uh, what is possible yes. within their community, uh, particularly based on the transition into renewable energy. What can they do? Uh, what kind of uh, resource are they endowed with within those communities uh, that they can take advantage? But if we look at it from a micro level, uh, it might be very difficult over a period of time to scale it up. So what I think uh, going forward is what we spoke to about earlier. Let the government continue to make uh, investment in what communities are endowed with and take advantage of those renewable energy that are deposited within those communities to the benefit of those communities. So you may not necessarily put those power unless they are really uh, much that is generated, you can put them into the national grid. Otherwise. You can put them into a mini grid that serve specific small and medium enterprises yes. within those communities. At micro level, the extent to which people can really generate um, electricity um, uh, leave much to be desired. But then, okay. if you have pockets of those uh, uh, commitment from communities, then um, I know for sure in uh, Kenya, the uh, private sector initiative. Uh, that are providing sonar panels to power people energy, and the cost in terms of uh, what people pay uh, yes. is very low, and there's an opportunity for them to pay over a period of time. Uh, uh, to we some also extent, have that in Nigeria. Yes, to some extent, you're able to just pay some uh, little token in terms of uh, okay. Naira and Kobo, uh, or shillings, and you get power uh, in your house. So those are the things that we can encourage uh, as a people, as a government. But then the, the cost of entry into the solar energy is still very expensive. Because if you look at the yes. cost of uh, the batteries that yes. have to power those things, they are very expensive. And you equally have uh, counterfeit batteries. When you set up one, uh, they give you a gestation period of about 
30 months or 30 something months it's and after six months you're already making another so investment I've, I've also heard that it depends on how many appliances that you're going to power with the solar panel so if it's not too many you don't need that many that much number of batteries. yeah in spite of those configuration engineering configuration that is dependent on the uh, your energy usage yes. but then there are issues with counterfeit batteries yes. so the yes. lithium that we have here let the government encourage investment so that we can manufacture the batteries here so that we can use them to power some solar and at the end of the day uh, the investment in terms of importation of batteries will quickly help to cushion the effect of uh, the tariff that you talked about earlier. Yes, okay. Okay, yes, Mr. Sam, you have really expanded, you have really delved into this subject matter thoroughly. Yes, so just on a final note, Mr. Sam, we actually need, um, yes, we know that the federal government has given states the authority to actually power their, if there's an opportunity for them to, in partnership with private companies or private individuals, to partner and come up with more affordable renewable energy sources for their states, for example. So how can, um, how can we actually delve, because we know in states like, for example, Lagos State, yes, it's something that has been going on for a long time. In Abuja, in Port, in River State also, but more states need to actually take advantage of this and actually commit and actually join with other private and um, private companies and foreign investors. So, what would you recommend as to them actually inviting them over to actually improve on our power supply in Nigeria? Uh, Just for the states. No, that's truly why speaking, uh, a lot of states actually made investments. Uh, and one of the earliest states that made investment in that sector uh, that were cannibalized by the federal government was Aquaibo. They made a massive investment to generate, uh, but the federal government frustrated that administration between 1999 and 2007. But thank God that um, a review has been made. So those state government, I do know for sure that in Delta State, in Delta State uh, the state secretariat is uh, powered by the electricity that is generated by the estate okay. as well. And the companies that are contiguous to that secretariat equally benefit from that energy source. So the idea is that most states and local government can upscale whatever form of renewable energy that they're able to generate and supply people uh, electricity, so there will be competition yes. with other distribution company, and maybe when there's much competition, then the prices will naturally, just like what happened in the telecom industry. Yes, so yes. the law is uh, there. Now they cannot blame the federal government. Yes. So source partnership from all over the world, whether local or international, find a way to map the ecosystem in terms of what kind of industry, what kind of housing that you can provide electricity to, and you begin to exploit uh, uh, renewable energy to the advantage of your immediate community. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Sam, for joining us this morning on Market Insights, where we talked about the benefits of using renewable energy as a source, as a more permanent alternative for our electricity supply in Nigeria. We look forward to having more discussions with you on Market Insight. So when we come back after the break, we'll talk about the parallel markets. Please stay tuned. Idumota Market. A Go Idumota, once a residential neighborhood, is home to Idumota Market located on Lagos Island. It is one of the oldest and arguably one of the largest markets in West Africa. Idumota is a historic neighborhood adjacent to the Lagos port that facilitated the slave trade and later, under the British indirect rule, it surrounded to exports that fueled the colonial enterprise. Idumota was also the location of an armed forces remembrance cenotaph called Soja Idumota, built as a monument to Nigerian soldiers who served with the West African Frontier Force. 
and Eyomashkiri statue and a clock tower are also some monuments at Idumota. Idumota market is so popular that large sales are recorded as early as 7 a.m. The market is made up of hundreds of lock-up shops occupying several multi-story buildings with some measuring about five or more floors. In 2010, the Lagos State Government demolished some illegal structures in order to improve vehicular and human movement in and around the markets. During weekdays, the neighborhood of Idumota is densely populated by shoppers, traders and bus passengers. From the Carter Bridge, ascending into Lagos Island, passengers can see the neighborhood before disembarking at their final destination. Idumota market accommodates the substantial inflow of imported goods. The bulk of import from abroad are routed first through Idumota and then on to other markets through Nigeria and other West and Central African countries. The energy of private Idumota traders and wholesalers facilitate this activity, where millions of US dollars worth of wholesale is exchanged daily. Idumota Market Souk Enlightenment Welcome back. Now let's see what's trading in the parallel market. So today at the parallel market, the dollar is buying at 1,525 naira and selling at 1,532 naira. The pound sterling is buying at 1,885 naira, selling at 1,900 naira. And the euro is buying at 1,600 naira and selling at 1,620 naira. So that's the parallel market for today. So thank you so much for joining us this morning on Markets Insight, where we talked with our guest, Mr. Sam, on the opportunities in the, in the renewable energy sector and how Nigeria stands to benefit from having more sources of re en renewable energy and how we can actually spread this to rural communities in the country and how we can actually have an affordable renewable energy plan for electrification all over the country. Join us tomorrow where we discuss more commodities and the stock market on Market Insight. I am your host, Lavina Emma.